the um, randomized um, phase three study, which is called the impact MF study, is a study of, it's an ongoing study of a metal stat, the telomerase inhibitor, in patients who have refractory myelofibrosis, refractory to a JAK inhibitor. Um, and they're randomized to a metal stat at 9.4 milligrams per kilogram every 21 days uh, in a two to one fashion or best available therapy. Um, and best available therapy does uh, exclude a JAK inhibitor, um, but is um, physician selected prior to randomization. The, the point of this study is to, um, is to determine whether there is a overall survival benefit of this novel telomerase inhibitor in patients who have refractory disease to a JAK inhibitor. The phase two study, um, which was a randomized study, looking at two different doses of a metal stat, 9.4 and 4.7 milligram per kilogram IV every three weeks, um, demonstrated uh, modest spleen uh, symptom improvement, but um, encouragingly a survival of about almost 30 months in the 9.4 milligram per kilogram arm. And these are patients who were relapse refractory from JAK inhibitor, which at least five different independent studies would suggest the survival is approximately 12 to 15 months. Um, and Andrew Kakendell from Moffitt did a beautiful real world data comparison with a propensity score matching. Uh, that uh, compared a cohort of patients at Moffitt to uh, a similar, similarly matched cohort of patients um, treated in the, um, in the phase two study with 9.4 milligram per kilogram of a metal stat. Um, and again, it, it replicated this finding that there was a, a clear survival advantage, uh, at least twice what you would see uh, with conventional therapies. Um, so this, this data was quite encouraging. It, it, it is uh, collectively what... Um, what um, inspired this phase three study. And it's, uh, I think it's an exciting uh, study in general for the field um, because it's the first study that I'm aware, aware of. And it's a registration study where overall survival is the primary endpoint. Um, and you know, I think we will learn a lot from this study. We will, we will understand better um, the nature of Rux failure um, and whether um, modulating the disease um, and perhaps uh, reducing the burden of, of malignant stem cells through telomerase inhibition um, can improve um, the survival, which is a, an important outcome, which is often overlooked um, because there's been a lot of emphasis on spleen and symptom for good reason. Um, but this is a, a step forward in trying to improve outcomes in a different way. Enrollment is, is ongoing. This is a global uh, phase three. So it's a large study, many centers across the world. Um, we're really looking for patients who've been on ruxolinib meet failure criteria um, and um, can uh, receive this drug. Um, in some cases, this may be a bridge to transplant for some patients. Other patients, this may be definitive treatment. Um, and, um, you know, I think this is a, it's obviously an important study um, to, you know, to, to move the field forward. So I would definitely encourage uh, those uh, physicians in the community that treat patients. If you see that the patient is, um, is perhaps not doing uh, well, losing response to Roxanne and progressive spleen symptom burden, um, you know, consideration for referral to this trial, I think is really appropriate.